Okay, um, Assalamualaikum dan selamat pagi. Apa khabar semua pelajar pagi ini? Semua sihat ya? Saya doakan semuanya sihat sejahtera. Khabar baik. Khabar baik. Uh -huh. Semua dah ada dalam di uh, kampus UKM, Bangi. Semua di kampus atau di rumah? Ada yang di rumah, ada yang di UKM. Oh, maknanya tak semuanya di kampus lah. Masih ada di rumah lah ya. Uh -uh. Okay, um, okay, saya akan share slide. Uh, kita sambung. Boleh nampak ya slide saya? Okey tak? Ah, boleh ya. Okey, uh, jadi minggu lepas kita uh, I've already discussed with you about um, introduction to a sanitary landfill. Uh, is um, uh, apa, uh, trying to find out uh, uh, what are the suitable locations. Yeah. Okay, so this week uh, we will be uh, looking at the design of a sanitary landfill and uh, of course there are uh, leachate uh, management, yeah, gas, uh, especially methane gas generation, how do we collect, how do we manage and also uh, regarding the operation and the management of the landfill itself. Okay, so uh, if we look, if we go to the landfill site, yeah, uh, what are the daily operations that they are doing at the landfill? Of course, you can see at the right side of the picture, uh, there are waste being dumped there and um, it is being um, uh, placed in one area, in one section of the cell. Yeah, so that's, uh, they are trying to uh, maximize the area so that more waste can be placed uh, into the the landfill cell yeah what we call one uh, one of i mean uh, the one area that being excavated is being called as a cell okay at the left hand side what you can see is that uh, there are various equipments being used yeah? uh, to to construct um, one landfill cell yeah so this is uh, the picture is actually quite far away, but uh, we we will be looking at in more detail in, in the next slides. Okay, um, you can always ask me. Uh, boleh tanya terus jika ada sesuatu yang kurang faham ya. Okay. So, uh, what what is actually the function of a sanitary landfill? Of course, we know that most of our waste, which cannot be recycled. Uh, reuse yeah, um, that we cannot reduce. Then what happened is that waste will be collected and sent to a land, yeah, to a landfill that actually uh, we are dumping everything there. Okay, so um, you have learned last week there are open dumping. I mean there are various categories of landfills such as open dumping, just a landfill or a sanitary landfill. So a sanitary landfill is like an engineered system, yeah. Uh, even though we are still dumping the waste uh, on an area uh, in the uh, of an area, however, there are considerations for a sanitary landfill. Okay, so of course the main purpose is storage of waste, meaning that everything that we do not want anymore at our home, then we store. I mean, we send it to a land, and it is actually like a storage of waste. Yeah? We are storing of uh, our materials of our waste in an area. So the purpose is as a storage and also at the same time treatment of mostly the uh, organic waste because organic waste can be biodegraded. Yeah, so storage and treatment. Another thing, uh, the function is uh, environmental protection. Yeah, even though we are storing the waste in a, in a, in a land, yeah, 
Uh, however, we are con considering the impact of, to the environment. So there are various uh, facility uh, requirement that is that is required for us to consider to do uh, in order to protect the um, the, the the land uh, or the the environment at the landfill. And also, uh, at the same time, uh, we we need also to think about land development at the end of the of the landfill um, uh, duration. Yeah. So what will happen to the to the land? So we need to think about what are the development next after the landfill being closed. Okay. So there are three main functions of landfill. Um, okay, here it says that the sanitary land landfill system must be designed with consideration towards preserving the living environment by preventing undue incidents, such as overflowing of waste and leachate seepage, uh, propagation of vectors, meaning that we, are, we want to ensure that no animals or insects or uh, uh, anything that can actually propagate um, uh, uh, diseases, yeah, pathogens, yeah, and uh, we are trying not to attract wild animals or the waste being scattered and also emission of unpleasant odor. Yeah, so when we are constructing a sanitary landfill, those are the things that we need to know to consider. Uh, before we are actually actually constructing a landfill site, yeah, a sanitary landfill site. Okay, so when we are looking at a cross section of a landfill, so this picture is actually showing uh, one of the cell, yeah, uh, uh, active cell, uh, because I already mentioned to you earlier, uh, the landfill cells are not being constructed or the land are not ex being excavated all at the same time, it is being excavated one at a time. Yeah. So uh, if we are looking at this cross section of a landfill, so you can see that this is a uh, one cell. Of course, we are we need to consider about lining system. This this actually the line lining uh, the lining of the uh, the bottom of the landfill. Yeah. Yes, so the lining system is uh, for us to ensure that there are no leachate or any other um, uh, uh, problematic uh, dis, uh, discharge from the waste uh, from the waste itself. Yeah? So we are actually trying to conceal the cell from uh, being uh, in, in order to ensure a, a safe protection of the environment surrounding the landfill. Yeah? OK, so we are considering the lining system and then at the bottom, there is actually a leachate collection pipe system. So meaning that uh, when the leachate being generated, yeah, so it will be collected using this piping system. OK, so on top of the piping system, there will be like a compactor clay liner. Yeah, so it, it, it is still a liner so that waste uh, being separated from uh, the bottom of the landfill itself. Yeah, and only after that waste will be placed on top of the compacted clay liner. Yeah, so uh, normally every operation day, meaning daily, uh, a temporary cover will be placed uh, uh, on the waste itself. Yeah, so that uh, the wind will not blow the the waste, uh, one of the reason, and other reason would be uh, to avoid uh, animals of any other vectors to to go and uh, and take up yeah and take up the waste from the from the cell itself yeah so that's why it is required like a daily cover for the waste yeah at the end of the operation day yeah and then uh, we need also to consider. Um, uh, at the end of the landfill life um, lifespan, there would be a final uh, a layer, yeah, a, a cover layer, a final one. So it would be a compacted clay cover on, uh, on the very topmost of the landfill uh, of the landfill cell, and then there should be a drainage layer. So there there should be drainage and geomembrane cover, so that drainage uh, we will actually 
uh, uh, route the water that goes into the cell into a, a, a surface runoff collection system. Yeah? Okay, and then we need to consider cover soil and then we need to place top soil and then we will need to provide cover vegetation. Okay, so that's uh, regarding what what uh, a cell in a landfill all about. Yeah? What, what's the requirement of the cell? Okay, so just now I mentioned to you um, what are the purpose of the landfill function. This was the earlier slide. Uh, first, storage and treatment. Yeah? Okay, now we go to the explanation. What are the storage and treatment requirement? Yeah? Okay, first thing is um, it is as a retaining function. Okay, what does it mean? Retaining function. Okay, so I mentioned cells, yeah? uh, sanitary landfill cell. Each of the designated cells must be filled in an orderly manner and the landfill site must be kept in a workable condition throughout the target lifespan. Yeah? So it must be filled orderly, meaning that waste that arrive there need to be uh, 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 considered to be placed in one, in one side of the cell until it is full. Yeah? Okay, then the stability of the closed landfill must also be maintained over a predetermined period. So after the landfill is closed, there should be um, uh, maintenance of the landfill itself. Okay, uh, we also need to uh, provide suitable re retaining bonds. Yeah, okay, I will explain to that later. Retaining bonds, embankments, walls and dikes must be provided to retain the waste. Such waste uh, retaining must be maintained throughout the operational period, closure and also during the post-closure. Yeah? So, meaning that in the operation, it must be maintained and uh, during closure of the landfill and after closure. Yeah? So, few years, like almost probably around 10 years after it's been closed, yeah? after a landfill has been closed, uh, still there should be a maintenance of the landfill, should be continued. Okay. The retaining structures must be robust and uh, constructed to prevent against erosion and also weathering. Okay, what else? Then we look at into the leachate being generated. So what we have to do, leachate and also surface run runoff yeah, from rains and that goes uh, to the landfill side. Okay, seepage control function. Okay, leachate from the landfills must not be allowed to seep into the waterways, rivers, groundwaters, groundwater sources, aquifers. So this is very important because, of course, from the uh, organic waste being disposed at the landfill, uh, it can easily go to the river nearby. Yeah, that can create problem. Yeah, okay, so it must be controlled. And then excess water seeping from the surrounding of the landfill waste is minimized and diverted. Okay, excess water that probably will come from rain, the rainfall, yeah. And also surface rain for storm water runoff and drainage. Of course, that it should be provided. And then I mentioned about liner. Liner may also be installed at the bottom and sides of the landfill area as to prevent leachate from seeping through and also to divert and, and channel the leachate into leachate collection pipes and to the treatment facilities. Okay, what about treatment function? Yeah, Meaning that when we are storing, then we need to treat the waste itself. So we need to consider treatment yeah, whereby solid waste undergoes process of decomposition. So I mentioned last week that uh, a, a sanitary landfill is like a large um, bioreactor. Yeah? So uh, normally, uh, in, uh, uh, we, we just provide a small bioreactor like uh, lab scale, scale bioreactor or uh, um, uh, 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 a facility for treating uh, uh, wastewater. Yeah? So this is a very large uh, uh, bioreactor. Yeah? Okay. The, bio, the biological, physical and chemical changes occurring in the waste layers play an important role in the treatment process. 
So when the waste goes into the bioreactor, we say it uh, in a landfill cell as a bioreactor, uh, the process will occur, normally it will be uh, anaerobic digestion process because normally it, it will be lacking of oxygen. Yeah? So when there's no oxygen in the cell, uh, therefore the um, uh, my, uh, anaerobic microorganisms will be active and therefore uh, the biodegradation process will occur. However, uh, methane gas, carbon dioxide gas will actually be released from the process. Okay, so that would that is what happened in the in the cell itself. Okay, and the byproduct of the decomposition process, such as leachate and gases, yeah, as I mentioned just now, suitable treatment facilities should be provided in order to prevent and minimize further contamination and pollution to surrounding environment. Okay, so this is another cross section. So we can see at the bottom of the landfill, yeah, of course, it's, it's, this is actually uh, the lining system, okay? So the lining system will be at the bottom and also at the embankment or at the sides of the landfill cell, yeah? So at the bottom would be, we are placing the um, uh, piping system, yeah? Uh, normally, it should be perforated. There should be holes uh, so that it can go into the, into the holes and into the piping to the piping system and it will be collected and brought to the uh, leachate treatment pond yeah or leachate treatment pond is like a similar to wastewater treatment pond yeah so it will be collected and it will be uh, uh, treated in a leachate treat uh, treatment pond and then uh, we also need to collect uh, gases such as methane gas especially methane gas the majority of the gas being released and also uh, carbon dioxide gas, it, it, it will also be collected and it will be uh, transformed into um, uh, renewable energy, yeah, energy. So, so therefore that the energy can be uh, used uh, to the community or even to the facility itself. Okay. Okay, so um, so I think this 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 is uh, just a flow chart of um, the process itself. Okay, uh, so we know that in the process, waste will be divided into uh, biodegradable waste and also non-biodegradable waste. So here there will be um, biodegradation process occur. Uh, it could be aerobic process. And it can also be anaerobic process, yeah, anaerobic, aerobic and anaerobic process. And okay, so uh, some gases will be released, water will be released as well, gases, yeah. And other in organic materials will be like metals, yeah, ions, yeah, metallic ions and other waste also uh, present in the waste in our waste. Okay, so next would be the function of environmental protection. Yeah, so environmental protection function is essential. So when we are thinking about constructing a sanitary landfill, environmental protection is one of the important aspects that we need to consider. Okay, such harmful uh, effects are caused by problems associated with discharge of leachate. Yeah, so environmental issue will relate to leachate. Yeah? Emission of volatile greenhouse gases, so methane gas, uh, carbon dioxide, and other ga gases, and then a bad order or foul order. So one of the problem is how to reduce uh, order at the landfill, and there are vectors and animals uh, that can cause problem to the landfill, and uh, noise and disturbances. Yeah, noise if there are. Uh, community, yeah, community staying nearby the landfill site. So uh, noise could come from the trucks or lorries that carries the waste to the landfill sites, yeah, uh, and also the equipment being used at the landfill. Yeah. Right. Uh, then uh, regarding the post closure, meaning that after the uh, landfill site already closed, yeah. 
So uh, maintenance uh, after that, yeah, post closure maintenance should be carried out. Yeah, post closure land use must be evaluated and decided carefully with considerations towards the ground conditions, the environmental conditions, and the surrounding. So ideally, post closure land use should be limited to non-residential. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, we are targeting probably like uh, recreational parks yeah, or recreational amenities. Uh, however, there are certain landfill sites because normally the land um, cost at the cities, nearby the cities, normally it is uh, it could be very expensive and it's so attractive to be developed into residential areas. Yeah. So some areas, people, uh, uh, developers has or has also been considered uh, taking a, a closed uh, landfill as they are, uh, um, uh, they are considering it to be to construct housing areas. Yeah. So uh, care should be taken in, um, into consideration when uh, constructing. Uh, housing areas on top of a sanitary landfill. Okay. Uh, however, in developing areas where residential and commercial land are in demand, the post closure land may, may be developed and used for low density and low rise buildings. Okay. Any such development must be carefully evaluated. So, if in case the developer thinks that the land should be, uh, should be used, as um, commercial or uh, housing areas, so uh, it should be very carefully yeah, uh, evaluated. Yeah? And further additional ground stabilization and mitigation countermeasures may be necessary prior to constructions. Yeah? So um, if we know that um, we can Bukit Jalil yeah, Stadium, uh, Bukit, Jal Bukit Jalil Stadium. It used to be um, a closed landfill area yeah, in, in that area. And uh, there are uh, some development, uh, even some housing areas being developed nearby the area. Yeah. Okay, uh, sanitary landfill facilities. Okay, so what are the facilities uh, involved that are required? To be to be present or to be developed uh, in the facility. Yeah? So the the operations of the facility will include uh, facilities necessary for the actual operation and use at the landfill will include okay retaining structures yeah uh, the embankment yeah the retaining structures of the uh, sites of the landfill cell uh, and then the barns. Uh, Lining system that need to be constructed, drainage system, leachate collection and treatment facilities, gas collection, cover system, and so on. Yeah, so probably there are a few more. Okay, and regarding the management facilities, uh, will include uh, administration office. Yeah, uh, way bridge meaning to weigh the trucks or the lorries that uh, entering. The facility and also station, the Weybridge station. Okay, um, what are the sub supporting facilities? Yeah, the, uh, the supporting facilities shall be the common facility necessary to support the other management and operations facilities, such as access road. Okay, fencing. There should be fencing provided. There should be workshop for the. Uh, maintaining the trucks, the equipment, yeah? vehicle cleansing facility, meaning to clean the tires and so on before the trucks go uh, uh, exiting uh, the facility, and also a fire prevention system should be provided. Okay, so uh, in short or in summary, the operation facilities will include solid waste retaining structure, groundwater drainage system, seepage control work, rainfall collection system, leachate collection and treatment, daily cover facility and gas treatment equipment. Yeah, so this would be operation, whereas the management will include vehicle monitoring office, 
um, environmental monitor monitoring facility, yeah, because we know that uh, lichid, uh, the treated lichid will be discharged into groundwater or the river nearby. So therefore, uh, samples should be taken to monitor uh, the discharge, the quality of uh, ground uh, groundwater or the river nearby should be uh, done frequently, yeah, in, at an interval time. Administration building, way bridge, and machinery management. Okay, so that's management facilities and also supporting facilities such as access road, workshop equipment, notice board, gate, fence, fire prevention, and disaster prevention. Okay, so these are the target target of the environmental protection of those uh, operation facilities. Yeah. Okay, and finally, the post closure land use should be uh, considering the land development after that. Okay, so major design for a sanitary landfill, liner, lichid collection and management, gas facilities, stormwater management, and also final cover. Those are the major uh, design, major design for the operation of a landfill. Okay, and so uh, as I mentioned, uh, this would be the lining system, piping for lichid collection, uh, and then groundwater monitoring uh, of, of the water, groundwater quality or river quality, and then uh, waste being uh, placed into the cell. And then we are also looking at final cover, uh, gas, maintain gas monitoring, and then gas collection and control. Yeah, so those are the 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 requirement uh, of the design of a sanitary landfill. Okay, uh, waste retaining facility that need to be constructed would be uh, concrete dike, barn, earth embankment, retaining wall, sheet piling. Yeah, and then design conditions and loading for each structure are different depending on its purpose. So you have to do uh, to calculate the loading of each structure. Yeah? Uh, as a civil engineer, this is appropriate for your work. Yeah? Most suitable structural configurations shall be determined based on the topographical conditions of the surrounding area, with loading according to the landfill plan and soil conditions of the foundation yes so con the, the structural con con uh, configuration shall based on the topographical conditions how it, how is uh, the topography of the area okay waste being loaded into the area yeah okay and also the soil conditions of the foundation okay at the planning stage it, it is necessary to compare various types of structure so what what type of structure is suitable for the area depending on the soil conditions topography and so on okay while in the design stage it is important to reconfirm whether the structural configuration selected in the planning stage is the most viable and appropriate okay so this is actually enclosing barn of a landfill waste retaining facility Okay, so uh, this will be the, the waste being placed in uh, in the cell. Okay, there should be enclosing barn, yeah. And then uh, it should be a level uh, area, five meters, uh, so that maintenance can be done. And even uh, equipment can pass through uh, uh, the, the landfill cells, yeah. There should be a side ditch, yeah. There should be a drain, draining system, yeah. Okay, so the loads acting on the retaining facility are landfill dead loads, okay. Uh, also, landfill, uh, layer, uh, landfill layer pressures, static waste pressures, uplift, uplift force, and also pore water pressure. Okay, so those are the loads that we need to consider. Okay, in order to select the types of loading to be considered in the structural design, decisions shall be made based on information concerning the characteristic of the waste. So you uh, need to know the waste characteristics, uh, whether uh, the, the, such as the moisture content, um, uh, the organic materials of the waste. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, and then the topography, geology, soil conditions, expected lifespan of the facility, and also the surrounding area. Okay, any questions uh, regarding um, the bun uh, or the retaining of the facility? The bun that need to be constructed surrounding the cell, yeah? If there's no question, so we go on to the lining system. Yeah, as I mentioned, it is one of the important design in a landfill. OK, a lining system can be a single liner system. Yeah, meaning that single liners consist of a clay liner, a geosynthetic clay liner. So it is made of clay and of a geomembrane, yeah, specialized plastic sheeting. OK, so single liners are sometimes used in landfill design to hold construction and demolition waste or debris. Yeah? So normally uh, single liner is uh, is suitable for less uh, uh, watery waste, yeah? especially uh, organic waste or food waste that being disposed in the landfill. It is not suitable for those kind of waste. It is more suitable for construction waste where uh, there's no uh, organic degra uh, waste degradation being uh, occurring in, in the landfill site or in the landfill cell. Yeah? Okay. So what about composite liner systems? Okay, a composite liner consists of a geomembrane in combination with clay liner. So uh, multiple types of materials being used. Yeah, geomembrane with clay liner. Yeah, composite liner systems are more effective at limiting leachate migration into the subsoil than than either a clay liner or a single geomembrane liner. So it is better for uh, municipal solid waste. Yeah, because we know that municipal solid waste consists of food waste. Yeah, uh, so and therefore it should be more. Um, stringent, more uh, robust to um, ensure that no leachate will be uh, released from the landfill cell. Yeah. Uh, okay. Further, the the third one is a double liner systems. Okay. A double liner systems means uh, consists of either two single liners. Yeah two composite liners or a single and a composite liner. OK, so more multiple materials being used uh, as the liners, as the lining system. OK, the, the upper or the primary liner usually functions to collect the leachate. OK, so the, the primary liner will collect the leachate while the lower secondary liner acts as a leak detection system and back up to the primary liner. OK, so this is more uh, robust yeah, to ensure uh, minimum uh, to, to ensure maximum protection and minimum uh, pollution uh, polluted pollution can can be released from the cell. Yeah, OK, so for the double liner systems, uh, it can be used in some municipal solid waste landfill and also it is also appropriate for hazardous waste landfill. Yeah. So you know that industrial waste yeah, that cannot be treated anymore will need to be uh, sent to a secure landfill. And this kind of liner system will be used for um, hazardous waste landfill. OK, so that's about the lining system. OK, from these pictures, you can see how the lining systems being installed. Yeah. So this, this is actually the picture of a complete lining system being placed at one cell of a landfill. So this is a, a, a actually a large scale. Yeah. And then these would be the sites of the cell that need to be that, that need to be uh, uh, include the lining system as well. Yeah. So at the sides or of the embankment and at the bottom of the cell. Yeah. So here we can see the cross section. Uh, this this would be the piping system, and then okay. So this would be the first lining system. For example, 
uh, under drain geomat here, yeah? and then engineered clay, clay lining system, and then there would be uh, HDPE membrane, plastic, very thick plastic membrane, and then secondary uh, geomat. So this is multiple uh, lining system that being considered, yeah. And okay, so after the lining system being placed, then only the waste will be uh, placed on top of the lining system. Okay, and finally, before uh, for the before the final closure, uh, the, when the cell is being completed, so there should be another lining system on top of the landfill. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's it about the lining facility. Okay, now we are looking at stormwater drainage. Of course, in tropical region like Malaysia, uh, where there are lots of rains at certain period of time. Okay, so this is very important. Okay, stormwater drainage facility is installed to reduce the amount of leachate generated from the landfill sites. So you, can you imagine if all the rain falls on top of the landfill without being diverted into uh, a stormwater drainage. So uh, the leachate that will be produced will be a lot. Eh? So uh, the treatment pond will be will, will need to be enlarged and so on. So in order to reduce the cost, stormwater management or drainage systems should be placed appropriately. Yeah. Its function to prevent stormwater from surrounding areas to enter the landfill sites. Okay, stormwater roped on the landfill sites shall be discharged without any contact with solid waste. Okay, so uh, and uh, it, we we if possible, the stormwater will not will not be in contact with the solid waste because if it is in contact, then the water will be uh, treated as leachate. Yeah, so it's no longer a stormwater uh, category. Yeah, okay. Following conditions are required for the construction of a stormwater drainage facility. So, uh, what should we do with the drain? Drains shall be constructed surrounding the landfill site to prevent the outside stormwater from flowing into the landfill site. Okay, so surrounding the landfill site, there should be a drainage system constructed. And then uh, next would be at the dikes or embankments shall be installed if necessary to prevent stormwater from uh, landfill areas where landfill activities have not started to flow into the waste layer. Okay, so at the embankments or at the dikes. Okay, next would be drains shall be constructed on the surface of the landfill final soil cover at completed landfill areas to separate the stormwater from leachate and drain off the stormwater from the landfill areas. Okay, so meaning that at the end uh, of the, when the landfill is already full, so there should be a drainage system being constructed for each cell. Okay, so these are the flow, the movement, eh, the water movement at the landfill. Okay, so drainage into so we are trying to avoid yeah, uh, the drainage system will avoid uh, rainwater or stormwater seeps into the uh, where the waste being placed. Yeah? So we try to minimize water entering into the landfill site. OK, so what are the classification of stormwater drainage at the facility? OK, stormwater drainage would have a drainage channel, which is the drain. And also, we need to construct a retention pond for firefighting. So, uh, drainage channel and also retention pond. So, for drainage channel, uh, there should be upstream diversion channel, perimeter trench drain, uh, drain trench drain uh, in landfill site, and also landfill surface drain. Okay, those are the types of drainage system that need to be constructed at the landfill site. And then uh, trench drain around completed landfill section and also trench drain around unworked landfill section. So other unworked landfill section will also need to provide trench drains, uh, drainage system. Yeah. 
So how do we estimate the runoff? Okay, so I think in hydrology, you have been introduced how to calculate runoff, yeah? Using Q equals to C, Q is the runoff flow rate in cubic meter per hour, yeah? C would be the runoff coefficient, I would be the rainfall intensity, millimeter per day, and also the area uh, being covered uh, by the runoff, yeah? by the by this calculation, yeah? Okay, uh, leachate collection facility. Okay, so just now, uh, we are discussing about the surface runoff and also the storm water. So now, any questions regarding regarding this, the storm water management or the runoff? No, okay, yeah? no problem. Mm, no you are still awake. Tak tidur lagi. <laughs> I hope you are not sleeping. Um, it's still in the morning, around before 11, 10 minutes before 11. Okay, if you are still okay, if you need a break, uh, because I will be continuing on the leachate collection facility. Do you, do you need a break? Or can I continue with the lecture? Is it okay? Yes. So, still okay, eh? Mm, okay, <laughs> okay uh, now uh, I will be discussing to you regarding uh, the design for leachate collection facility. Okay, of course, leachate will be produced uh, and uh, and this is actually the, the main, the most, uh, the majority of the cost of the facility is to provide leachate treatment facility yeah, for a sanitary landfill. Yeah? It is very expensive. Okay, leachate collection facility is aimed at collecting leachate generated from the landfill site, channel it to a predetermined predetermined facility for treatment. Yeah? So we need to have a treatment pond before discharge into the river or into the environment. Yeah? Sometimes this leachate will be collected and recirculated back into the cell, into the landfill cell. Yeah? So uh, it means that they are using the leachate as uh, to um, meaning uh, to include the microbes and yeah, the microorganisms uh, in the leachate so that to enhance the, bio, the biodegradation process in the uh, landfill cell. Sometimes uh, some of the operators will be using that. Uh, the one in, in Kuala Lumpur, Bukit Taga Landfill, they are actually saying that they are, use, uh, uh, they are, they are doing a zero discharge, meaning that the, the treated leachate will be recirculated back into the cell. Okay, it also serves to supply air into the landfill waste layers through the collection pipes for the semi-Arabic sanitary landfill. Remember last week, uh, I, I was telling you about semi-aerobic sanitary landfill, meaning that uh, oxygen can be introduced using the leachate uh, collection facility to introduce oxygen into the uh, cell, eh, into the sanitary landfill cell. Okay, so leachate collection uh, facility will include collection pipe, yeah, collection pipe, there would be bottom pipe, uh, and the pipe can be placed at the bottom of the landfill. It can also be inclined pipe, it can also be vertical pipe, yeah. And uh, for the bottom pipe, it can be like trunk line or a branch line, yeah. It depends on the suitability of the topography of the site, yeah. And then uh, we also need to consider the leachate retention pit or leachate control pond, a valve that need to be provided, yeah, facility for extracting leachate. And then reticulation pipe, facility for transporting leachate. Yeah, reticulation pipe, meaning that after the, the leachate being collected, then there, there should be a um, reticulation system that will carry the leachate to the treatment pond, leachate treatment pond, yeah. So this is, uh, the this picture shows um, trunk line bottom pipe being placed 
and then branch line uh, branch line at the bottom of the pipe and then at the side of the cell would be inclined pipe and there are also vertical pipes in the center of the uh, cell yeah so this is this is how the um, pipes being placed at the landfill cell yeah okay there should be valve provided and also uh, the the sum yeah the the control pond yeah and valve and then leachate will be transferred to the leachate treatment pond okay any questions okay so this is similar thing yeah i've already explained earlier okay so what are the types and characteristics of the collection pipes Okay, so pipes can be, should be perforated hume pipe, yeah. So uh, perforated hume pipe would be uh, the diameter around 150 to 3000 and come the, uh, the characteristics of this pipe is used as collection and discharge pipes, very rigid structure, yeah. Suitable for cases where deformation of pipes is not tolerable, okay. Another type is uh, perforated poly polymer pipe reinforced plastic pipe, hardened PVC pipe, yeah, commonly used as collection and discharge pipes, light and relatively easy to install. Then we can also use permeable concrete pipe, commonly used to as collection pipes, but pores can be easily clogged up. So there's some drop drawback using the concrete pipes, yeah permeable synthetic polymer pipe and packed gravels can also be used. So uh, can you imagine yeah, uh, when the waste, uh, uh, I mean the pipes will be placed at the bottom of the cell and sometimes waste can clog up the perforated pipes. Yeah, So that's a problem. Yeah, That could be uh, problematic where leachate cannot be collected because of the clogging uh, occurred at the pipes. So it needs to be uh, cleaned up. Yeah? So there should be a process where cleaning up piping uh, need to be done uh, sometime uh, during the operation. Yeah? So uh, those are the consideration. And even the gas piping system yeah, will also be being, being clogged uh, by the waste. So it needs as well to be cleaned. Yeah. OK, so leachate collection and storage, the components uh, are already mentioned earlier. OK. And similarly, uh, just showing the, the piping systems, leachate collection pipes, there, there would be water pressure. Yeah? OK. And this is how the pipes being laid at the bottom of the um, cell. Yeah. Uh, and then there should be protection layers, uh, geotextiles. Yeah. And then here the leachate collection pipes. There should be geotextile um, drainage layers. Yeah. And then there would be HDPE liner as the lining system. OK, so this is the picture where the pipes being laid at the bottom of the cell. OK, so this would be the design of it. Yeah. So you uh, the, uh, you have to consider uh, the top yeah? after the cover material. There would be uh, the three times of the diameters of the piping system. There should be protective layer at the bottom, liner liner materials, yeah, gravel may need to be placed in order to avoid clogging of waste into the piping system. Okay, and this another. So this this look like the perforated pipes where there are some holes for in order to uh, to let the liquid being collected. And this is the picture where it is being laid at the bottom of the cell. And there also could be vertical 
cell, a vertical piping system to collect the cell, uh, to collect the lithium. Yeah. Can you imagine when the waste being placed on top of the cell, the waste will be increased in its height and uh, therefore uh, some collection piping system will need to be uh, will need to be provided vertically. Yeah. Okay, I think I've discussed about this. Okay, how do we estimate the leachate quantity? So it can be estimated using empirical data or we can use water balance technique which sets up a mass of balance among the precipitation, yeah, water precipitation, evapotranspiration, surface runoff, and also soil moisture storage. So, um, okay, this is uh, the complete water balance in landfill, whereby precipitation plus water content of the waste plus the water for biochemical process should be balanced with volume loss by evaporation, yeah, uh, plus the gas water absorption, leachate loss, surface runoff, and also the volume of water held in the waste. Okay, so it, the quantity of leachate may be calculated using the water balance system um, formula, yeah. Okay, so this is a simplified water balance whereby C is the total percolation into the top soil layer equivalent to the precipitation 1 minus R which is a runoff coefficient minus S the storage within the soil and minus the evapotranspiration. Okay, so this is the calculation. Actually, uh, this calculation is taken from the the reference, the textbook that being suggested to you. Uh, there's an example in that. Okay. Uh, okay, leachate quality. Leachate quality is the, determined by the waste that being placed there. So if there are more organic waste or more food waste, meaning that the quality would be different as compared to a landfill where there's only construction waste yeah, being placed there. So leached quality is determined by the solid composition, climate, site hydrology, seasons, yeah, degree of the compaction, age of the landfill, cover design, yeah, uh, interaction of leached with environment, landfill design and operation, and also sampling procedure. Okay, so leachate quality will, uh, we will identify or anal analyze by its physical, yeah, char physical characteristics such as pH, redox potential, conductivity, color, turbidity, temperature, and order. It is similar to wastewater uh, characteristics, yeah. However, for leachate, it is more difficult, yeah. Um, meaning that it has a higher uh, concentration as compared to wastewater. Yeah. Okay. Physical, chemical. We will look. Uh, we will find out about the COD, phenols, uh, total organic carbon, yeah? uh, volatile solids, tannins, organic nitrogen, soluble oils. Okay. What about the inorganic? Uh, total suspended solids, total dissolved solids, chloride, sulfate. And so on and so on. Yeah, and biological, uh, of course, this is the most important. BOD actually, the most important parameters would be, be we are looking at the BOD, COD. Yeah, so that would be the most important parameters. Also, we are looking at coliform bacteria, especially when uh, the the leachate being treated at the leachate treatment pond, and then before it's being discharged to the river. So these are the important criteria in order to ensure that it will not polluting the river nearby. Yeah? Okay, so design guidelines. Uh, so this this is actually American design gu guidelines. Yeah, leachate the characteristics according to methanation phases. Okay, so meaning that. Uh, um, I mean, once the leachate being this released from the waste, 
it has a very high um, content. Yeah? It has a very, very high COD content. It can be, uh, this is a, early, a, a young stage of the, land, of the leachate. It can be as high as 18,000 milligram per liter. Uh, it can be even higher at the acid formation phase, which is about 20, can go as high as 71,000 milligram per liter. However, it, it is reducing after a certain period of time. Yeah, uh, it can go, it can be reduced to 9,000. Uh, and then during the maturation phase of the landfill, it can be as low as 900 milligram per liter. Okay, um, what else? Total volatile solids, pH conductivity. Yeah. Okay, uh, so this would be some estimation uh, of a new landfill, which is less than two years. So the, the most important parameters would be BOD. So it can, a, a new landfill could have uh, around 30,000 milligram per liter of BOD. And uh, after two years, before 10 years, it can be quite high, around 10,000 milligram per liter. But after 10 years, it can be low, as low as uh, 100 to 200 milligram per liter of BOD. And you can also see COD uh, would be very high for young landfill, meaning that young landfill with young leachate. Yeah? So it is like... Uh, can go as high to 60,000, yeah? uh, still high uh, in between, and it can go very low uh, after 10 years. But still, there are some uh, COD, BOD being released after 10 years. Yeah? All right. Okay, uh, leachate collection and treatment system is directed to low points at the bottom of the landfill. Of course, in the design, it should be at the, at the low points. Yeah? A drainage layer made from sand, gravel, and geosynthetic materials, I already discussed to you. And leachate can be removed by two means, uh, which is by using gravity flow, or it needs pumping, uh, uh, pumping for, uh, to remove the leachate. Yeah? Okay, so equation for calculating distance between the collection pipe. Uh, actually, there's example in the textbook as well, how to calculate that. Uh, next would be storage, leachate storage. Leachate from the landfill is temporarily stored uh, on site prior to treatment and disposal. Okay, storage of leachate is important for equalization of flow quantities and leachate quality to protect the treatment facilities. And storage alternatives can be surface impoundments of, or you can use tanks. Yeah? Okay, now we are looking at leachate treatment, yeah, which is to present the major expense of landfill. So, uh, if we are not reducing the amount of leachate, means that we are preparing for to uh, have a major, uh, to have a very high cost to treat the leachate. Yeah, so so it it is actually one of the major cause of a, a leach, uh, landfill construction. Yeah, leachate technology should be selected based on environmentally responsible and cost effective. Okay, so what are the treatment options? It can be biological process, activated sludge, which is which can actually remove 90%, 90 of the BOD possible. Yeah. We can also use aerated lagoons, anaerobic process, activated carbons, can remove more than 95% COD removal and 99% BOD removal. So activate <coughs> activated carbon and activated sludge is more, more um, suitable, but depending on the financial fi financial and also uh, management requirement. Yeah. Physical chemical, uh, we can use coagulation for removing heavy metals, adsorptions, uh, removing BOD, COD, and also reverse osmosis, removing uh, TDS, yeah, total dissolved solids, up to 96% removal. 
Okay, so the chip treatment pond at the side. So we have from this black looking leachate water, yeah, black looking leachate at the uh, initial pond, yeah, it will be treated using uh, kolam rawatan biology, biological pond, biological pond, and then physical chemical pond. Uh, so it gets more clearer and clearer, clearer. And finally, uh, for the final stage, yeah, so it will be very clear before it's being released to the river nearby. So that is what expected from the black color leachate until a very clearly uh, leachate before being released to the river nearby. Okay, so this actually, uh, uh, the picture was taken from Jeram Landfill in Kelang, yeah. Leachate treatment plant at Jeram Landfill, which is equipped with a collection system from the landfill cell. They are using a sequential batch treatment, SBR, for biological treatment. They have five aerated lagoons and two retention ponds. They also have the leachate will be treated at advanced and polishing treatment equipment with mixing tank, dissolved air flotation unit, and also sand filter and activated carbon, carbon filter. Okay, so that's how uh, the leachate treatment uh, treatment being facility being provided at Jeram Landfill. Uh, they are actually treating Daily, uh, daily average capacity around 450 cubic meter per day. Uh, 18 parameters will be complied, so they are complying with the Department of Environment uh, as uh, provided in their EIA report. Yeah. So new regulation required 29 parameters to be complied. Initially, they they are only required to comply 18 parameters, but Recently, they need to pro, uh, comply to 29 parameters. Yeah, the, uh, treated leachate released to Sembilang River nearby the facility. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is uh, leachate treatment aerated lagoon and also the clarification facility for leachate treatment. Yeah, and uh, this is. Uh, a picture of a leachate treatment facility at Bukit Taga Sanitary Landfill. Yeah, so they they have oxidation pond, retention pond, clarification pond as well. Okay, so new latest technologies using reverse osmosis to uh, finalize or polish polishing of the leachate. Yeah. There are also another process, direct osmosis concentration. It is a cold temperature membrane process that separates waste streams in low pressure environment. Yeah. Other technologies, land treatment system. Yeah. Small leachate flows can be treated using this system. Uh, the technique includes wetland. So if you have seen uh, a wetland, that it is like a final stage or polishing stage of the landfill uh, of the leachate okay it can also we can also use windrow composting for and the use of terrestrial plants yeah reed baits yeah can be used as well uh, i mentioned to you just now about leachate circulation yeah so in order to achieve zero discharge so leachate can be circulated in back into the cell Okay, this technique requires containment, collection, and recirculation. It offers rapid growth of anaerobic bacteria and can reduce waste stabilization, reduce the waste separation time as little as two to three years instead of 15 to 20 years. Okay. So this is the picture of uh, reed baits as a tertiary leachate treatment. Okay, uh, leachate will need to be, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, need to the, uh, need to take the sample. Yeah? We need to take the sample in order to uh, to analyze the leachate uh, quality. Okay, treated effluent quality monitoring. 
and treated affluent management, a zero discharge policy on treated affluent is recommended. Okay, this is uh, some of the leachate being used at the plants nearby as well. Yeah, for treated affluent has reached environmental standards allowing discharge into open water courses. Are irrigated 120 acre field instead of discharging into op open water courses. So they are actually recirculating it. Uh, at the site, yeah, at the facility site. Okay. Um, can we have a five minutes break before I continue to the last section, which is uh, the management of gases uh, from the landfill? Um, uh, we'll, I'll come back uh, to you again at around uh, Eleven fifteen. Is that okay to you? Okay, doctor. Okay. Uh, we have a five minutes break.
Okey. Semua dah ada? Boleh kita sambung? Boleh ya? Okey. Okay, uh, so you have learned about lining system, about digit uh, collection facilities and treatment. Okay, now we go to the next uh, design requirement, which is the uh, gas production in landfill. Okay, um, landfill operators, energy recovery project owners, energy users have to be able to estimate the volume of gas produced in a, at a landfill and uh, measure the gas composition, yeah? how much percentage of methane, moisture content and other gases content. Uh, next, for a gas uh, production from a landfill, they need to consider about recovery and energy equipment sizing. Project economics and uh, potential energy users depend on the peak and cumulative gas yield. So how much gases will be uh, produced from a young landfill, a middle-aged landfill or a mature landfill? Yeah? Actually, we can refer to mathematicals and computer models um, generally used for predicting gas yields. Okay, you can uh, include the data uh, at the certain landfill and automatically uh, the, 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 uh, the software can actually calculate uh, the amount of uh, gases that being uh, produced. Yeah, and uh, data that we can provide would be based on the population, generation rate, waste composition, water content, yeah, percentage of landfill, gas yield unit and dry weight yeah okay uh, in estimation uh, approximately uh, from a landfill decomposition process we can uh, produce yeah the landfill can produce uh, around 45% to 60% methane gas yeah carbon dioxide so also quite high so that is why um, landfill yeah uh, is considered one of the major contribution to global warming because the because of the release of carbon dioxide to the environment. They also produce nitrogen, which is very less as compared to those two, two to five percent. Oxygen is around one to uh, zero point one to one percent. Ammonia gases zero point one to one, and also hydrogen is the minimum. Uh, which is maximum, uh, which is around 0.2% of the total gases being produced here yeah, by volume. Okay, so how do we collect uh, landfill gas? Landfill gas moves by the pressure gradients uh, following the path of least resistant. Okay, gas emission uh, control, how it can be done by using passive collection meaning using van collectors and release the gas to atmosphere without treatment. Yeah. So typical spacing of passive van, passive van is one per 7,500 cubic meter of solid waste. Yeah. Uh, around 5,700 cubic meter, then one passive van work can be provided. Okay, the other type is active extraction. Yeah which uh, links collection wells with piping system and also at attracts the gas and the vacuum created by a cent central blower. Yeah. Okay. So gas estimation from a landfill by theory, yeah, by theoretical, uh, a one, one ton of solid waste, municipal solid waste will produce around 442 cubic meter landfill gas, which contains around 55% of methane with the heat value of 19,730 kilojoule per cubic meter. So uh, if we are uh, targeting to recover energy, so the heat value is important criteria uh, to, to show us how much energy can be obtained can be released from the methane gas, yeah? that we can get it from the methane gas. Okay, 
So this actually one of the method of uh, estimation, landfill gas est estimation using EPA land germ. You can actually download uh, for free uh, uh, this um, software. Yeah, you can say it's software. EPA land germ, where it can estimate the total gas emission rate from a landfill based on uh, the total period of solid waste placement, how long the waste being placed at the landfill, um, methane generation potential, and also the age of the section of the waste, and also the mass of the wet waste. Yeah? So it can estimate the amount of uh, methane gas being released. And uh, from the textbook as well, there's example and um, also the solution to find, to estimate the gases from a landfill. I think you, you can refer to that in the textbook. Okay, uh, landfill gas collection, um, production of volatile organic compound is expected during the degradation of organic landfills. Okay, landfill gas is the mixture of gases of methane. Yeah, as already discussed. Gas recovery trenches may be installed horizontally or vertically at the bottom of the landfill. Okay. So, uh, landfill gas management method. Okay. Firstly, uh, we need to drill. Yeah, we need to drill down the... Uh, gas vent or the piping system for the gas ventilation. Okay. And then uh, actually there's an option. Um, either the gas, the methane gas that being produced need to be burned intermittently. Yeah. Why is that need to be burned intermittently? Because we need to, uh, because methane gas can cause fire yeah? and easily explode. So if the uh, methane gas are not being recovered and uh, taken and there's another process to uh, recover the methane gas to be to be uh, used as electricity, then it needs to be burned as, uh, once in a while yeah, in order to ensure there's no methane gas present at the landfill surrounding the area and therefore it can cause burning of uh, uh, landfill site. Yeah? So that's, uh, if you have heard before, there are some occasions, yeah, cases where uh, landfill sites uh, burnt for like two weeks uh, or more yeah? because it's not easy to put off fires from landfill site because uh, methane gas being present at uh, around surrounding the landfill site and also uh, the waste being placed there is like uh, uh, the height is very, it's very high and then uh, the the waste being placed will produce methane at each uh, level of the of the waste here. Yeah? So meaning that it, it is not easy once a uh, fire started at a landfill site, it's not easy to put it off and sometimes we heard that they need to take around 10 to 14 days to to two weeks to put off the fire at the landfill site. So that is why if the operator decided not to use the uh, methane gas and, and recover it for energy requirement, then they need to burn the methane gas intermittently. Yeah? Okay, what else? Gas management. Okay, compaction of waste. Okay, from this picture, it is shown that once the truck arrived at the landfill uh, at the landfill site, they need to be weighted and then recorded at the office. Yeah, and then uh, the truck will place the solid waste at the at the cell. There would be equipment to place the waste at one side of the cell, and in order to increase the volume that waste can be placed into the cell, and then gas well drilling, yeah, um, at, uh, for the gas collection, it needs to be drilled, installation of gas well head, okay, gas well systems will be placed there, 
and landfill gas measurement will need will be done. Uh, gas piping system, gas delivery unit where it is being uh, transformed into energy, engines for uh, the process of transforming into electricity, yeah, and then it will be uh, transported to TNB sub substation, yeah. Okay, so the, this actually the process of uh, gas recovery at a landfill. Okay, see, this is a, a typical vertical gas well, yeah. And also gas monitoring probe. Uh, gases will need to be monitored uh, once in once in a while so that it will ensure, um, um, I mean, the gases. Uh, what are the kind of gases being produced or released from the from the site from the from the cell? And this is actually a landfill gas conversion unit. Okay, so for a landfill operation, uh, environmental monitoring will include a leachate treatment plant. It needs to be monitored weekly. For surface water sampling, it needs to be monitored monthly. Groundwater sampling, monthly. Ambient air sampling, quarterly. Noise monitoring every six months. And uh, the types of waste being placed at the landfill would be monitored daily. Yeah. Okay, uh, for landfill operation, okay, incoming and outgoing trucks weighted on the way bridge to obtain daily weight of waste. Okay, I have already shown to you earlier. Movement, placement and compaction of solid waste and cover in landfill require large machines. Track type bulldozers are generally used for spreading and compacting the solid waste and cover material with densities up to 600 kilogram per cubic meter. Yeah, so uh, if you are, if they are using bulldozers, it can compact the waste uh, up to maximum 600 kilogram per cubic meter. But if they are using landfill compactors, they can compact up to 950 kilogram per cubic meter of waste. Yeah, so more area can be covered. Uh, can be I mean more waste can be placed at the landfill if they are. Uh, able to use a compactor. Okay. Next, excavation and placement of soil cover are done by pans or scrapers. Requirement of type and quantity of, quantity of landfill equipment is determined by the type and amount of solid waste soil cover. So um, what are the what are the types and uh, equipment? Yeah, the types of equipment required. Um, Okay, uh, bulldozer, yeah, mm, or the compactors. Okay, uh, way bridge uh, is actually one of the equipment required uh, for the um, landfill. Okay, what else? Solid waste is unloaded from the truck on the in the working phase. The working phase is an area in the landfill. Okay, the working phase should be large enough for several vehicles to unload. Yeah, four to six um, cubic uh, meters per vehicle's area required. And bulldozer compact the waste on every solid waste layer height of 0 0.5 meters. Okay, this is a picture of unloading of uh, waste from the truck. Okay, so machinery uh, in Jeram landfill, they are using uh, track a bulldozer, five units, excavator, four units, uh, dump truck, four units, and a landfill compactor, two units. So there are like for one cell, they are require, required around uh, four, no, eight, yeah, eight, ten, and also fifth, around 15 types of equipment yeah, at a uh, cell. Okay, the garbage truck will be directed to the tipping platform as directed by the traffic controller. Okay, so waste is pushed and compacted uh, in the layers of 300 millimeter to 500 millimeter. 
OK, tipping off the waves at the side. Uh, and you can see bulldozer actually spreading the waste. And then these are the compactors, yeah, compactors being used to compact the waste so that more waste can be placed here. Yeah, uh, volume it can increase the volume and more waste can be placed uh, at the landfill. So this is one of the type of compactor being used. Actually, this is quite as expensive. Yeah, uh, that's why uh, uh, minimum number of compactors, steel wheel compactors, it can cost up to two to three million uh, ringgit for one compactor. Yeah, so it is very costly, and that's why they normally there would be one or two compactors uh, placed uh, at one sanitary landfill. OK, this is a picture of excavation of a sanitary landfill cell. So how they are excavating the cell. OK, what about uh, soil daily cover? Yeah, I mentioned to you at the end of the operation day, uh, one cell need to be covered. Yeah, so uh, they are using soil to cover a daily activities. Why they are using it? To control the surface runoff and run on, leachate generation, or the problem, uncontrolled gas migration, lateral leachate. Yeah, so that's why. And also, they, uh, because they are next to uh, Kelang, eh? it's in Kelang, so they are near the ocean. So they are, their soil is a marine clay. Yeah. And normally they are using it uh, as um, cover material uh, with a thickness around 150 to 500 millimeter. Okay, alternative daily co cover was done daily basis to reduce order problem, erosion, leachate generation, increase aesthetic view. They are using um, materials for uh, such as PPW, yeah, woven geotextile. It is a geotextile as uh, alternative daily uh, cover to cover the waste. Okay, what else? Closure of a landfill. Okay, so closure of a landfill will require capping, cap, yeah, putting on the final cover, and also doing landscape work, yeah, to provide uh, grass and other. Uh, plants, yeah, small plants, yeah. Post closure maintenance will require uh, leachate treatment monitoring, groundwater, groundwater monitoring, surface water monitoring, landfill settlement monitoring as well, yeah. And also, there normally will be gas landfill gas management, yeah, being provided. And okay, so this is a landfill closure. What do they have? They will have a cov soil cover, which is around 300 millimeter. They will have a top liner. Then field gas wells here, clay layer, 1000 millimeter. They also will place top soil on top of it. They have a drainage system at the sides, at the embankment, yeah, to collect surface water. They have grass and vegetative cover. OK. So um, what about landfill mining? Yeah, people are talking about landfill mining, meaning that taking up uh, valuable materials from the landfill. So some people will be uh, will tend to do that because thinking that uh, the waste will contain valuable materials. So uh, some uh, uh, companies will think that this can uh, provide income to them. Yeah, so they are doing landfill cover. Sorry, landfill mining. Yeah, where they are digging up old landfills and then they separate the non biodegradable fraction and then use the dirt and organic fraction as cover material or as compost. Yeah, so because from the biodegradation process, the organic waste is actually turned into uh, compost or fertilizer, yeah? or it can be used as topsoil. Yeah, 
So other products from landfill mining could be metals. Yes, yeah? so people could have done, could have thrown away metals, uh, plastics and other organics. So uh, they think that uh, landfill mining can uh, provide income to them. So the this advantage is that gas, yeah, methane gas, carbon dioxide gas can escape, which might be dangerous, contaminate, contaminated runoff, require efforts to clean mined materials. So the materials that have been collected will need to be cleaned um, uh, in order uh, to have to increase its uh, value. It need to be cleaner, yeah, and then. Uh, what are the advantage? The advantage is the recovery of the materials and it actually can provide land for a new landfill site. It can be a new landfill site or it can be a new development uh, of the land. Yeah? So that's the advantage. Okay, so okay, so that's it for the explanation about the design of a sanitary landfill. Um, so uh, there would be assignment for these topics, uh, which include the last week and this week. Okay, what do you have to do? Okay, uh, it's a PBL, it's a project, uh, it's a mini project. Uh, what you need to do is uh, you are required to describe, discuss and make comparison for three sanitary landfills in Malaysia. Uh, there are many sanitary landfills, but the main one would be by the Bajaya Enviro Park, Syndrome Rahat, which is in Bukit Taga Sanitary Landfill. So you need to make a comparison, Bukit Taga Sanitary Landfill, Jeram Sanitary Landfill, uh, operated by Worldwide Holdings, and Silong Sanitary Landfills, uh, operated by SWM Environment. Yeah. Actually, uh, the information can be obtained from the website. As normally, the website will will explain uh, quite detail about their operation, yeah, about their facility. So this is only based on the website. Yeah, okay. Uh, the scope, the study scope that you need to consider. Okay, you need to explain about the company, which is Berjaya Environment Parks Worldwide uh, Holdings SWM Environment. Uh, the background of the company. You will only also need to explain about what, where are the service area, which, uh, what, where, where the waste comes from, yeah, the origin of the waste, yeah. Okay, the service area, and then uh, how much approximately daily amount of waste being collected, uh, uh, meaning that um, uh, how much the sanitary landfill can. Uh, collect uh, uh, in a day, yeah. Collect uh, that that they can take up waste in a day. Uh, are are there any servicing roadways that goes into the landfill? You will need to find out about management facilities. Uh, what uh, if there are offices provided? If there are way bridge or equipments being used? Yeah. Uh, the next would be about the operation facilities. Uh, do they have landfill cells? Uh, explain about the landfill cells. Explain about the retaining and lining facilities that they have. Explain on the leachate collection and treatment, gas collection and recovery, and anything else that they have uh, uh, doing in their operation uh, at the landfill. And then uh, what about their close and post-closure plan at the landfill? and what are other relevant and additional features of the landfill. And uh, you can also, I think you need to have a section on uh, what you think about the landfill, that the operation of the landfill that they have, and if there are uh, some recommendations for improvement of the landfill based on the theory that we have discussed uh, in these two weeks. Okay, so this, this is actually a website of the Bajaya Envaru Park Sendriam Rahat at, for the Bukit Taga Sanitary Landfill. So they actually have provided 
quite a lot of information that you can find out from the website. Uh, the next one is Jeram Sanitary Landfill, uh, which is in Klang. Uh, actually, Worldwide Landfill is the initial, the first uh, landfill operator in Malaysia, which is a, which was in Ayitampucho. So they has very vast experience. They have started since like 1995, middle of 1990s, and they are still doing uh, this type of work uh, uh, for Jeram Landfill in Klang. Yeah. And the last one would be the SWM environment uh, for the southern uh, waste from meaning that uh, starting from the Gris Milan, the Milan, uh, Malacca and Johor. Yeah? So they have a Silong sanitary landfill in Johor. So they also have some information regarding the uh, sanitary, la sanitary landfill that they have in Silong landfill. Okay, uh, that's it for uh, the design operation of a sanitary landfill and uh, uh, you will have at least two weeks to complete uh, this assignment. Uh, okay, and this Friday, um, sorry, I think I will unshare. Okay, um, so this Friday we will have a, a discussion on hazardous waste management, yeah, and there will be a last class on the on next Friday, yeah, which is week number fourteen, on the twenty first January, and uh, there will be a test number two uh, on twenty eighth January, which is would be on Friday on the 28th January. Yeah, so uh, that's it, uh, the assessment for this course. Um, by this Friday, I will be discussing to you, giving you some tips for the test. So at least by uh, this Friday, yeah, uh, you will have um, some idea what to expect for the test. And then um, week 14, which is a decision support system, uh, I will only giving you uh, assignment for the for that topic. There's no test for that. Just assignment. All right. Um, so that's it. Uh, do you have any questions? Let me take your attendance. Um, prof, assignment. Yeah. Take a board table, prof. Apa dia? Soalan? Dibuat dalam TSC atau table prof? Yeah, um, it's good idea if you can, uh, because you you will need to make comparison kan? You, you need to make comparison. So if you can make a table, uh, compare for, to each other, I think that would be better lah. Yeah. Boleh buat table lah eh, prof? Ah, boleh buat table, dalam bentuk table sahaja. Just to make comparison, what they have. Okay, ada soalan lain? Apa apa lagi? Uh, tak ada ya. Uh, you can also ask me in the WhatsApp group. Yeah. So kalau tak ada apa apa lagi, I meet you again on Friday at eleven in the morning. Yeah, for hazardous waste management. All right. Well. Okay, so thank you to all. Thanks for listening to my lectures. Hope you you are not sleeping while I'm giving you the lecture. Yeah. All right. Thanks so again fun. and see you again next Friday, this Friday. All right. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof.